all things New Orleans Saints. This is Who Dat Discussion. Who dat? Who dat? Powered by Overtime Media. What is up, Who Dat Nation? Welcome into another film study here at the Who Dat Discussion. As always, I am your host, Andrew Galata. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Galata. And then also, you can follow the Who Dat Discussion on Twitter at the Who Dat Dis. We have a very interesting film study in store for you guys today, as we're going to be looking at quarterback Jameis Winston who the Saints signed on a one-year contract, and really, for Winston, it's to just learn behind Drew Brees, Sean Payton, and the Saints quarterback room, as he called it the Harvard for quarterbacks, as he's just here to learn and, I think, compete for the future of the job here with Taysom Hill as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what he can do. He's a player that has very high highs and then also has very low lows, and we know that, and we're really going to look at two games here. One really good game and one not so good game. So that really good game was against the Rams. They got the win in LA and he did a great job. The team put up 55 points. And then we're going to look at a game against the Saints where he threw four picks. He had a bad game and we're basically going to look at both of those games to see where he went wrong, see where he went right. And uh, basically just break down his play here. So without further ado, I think we should just get right into the film. So, let's jump right into this first play here. It's going to be between the Bucks and the Rams, as I said before. And basically what this play is going to show is Winston's ability to recognize some one-on-one matchups and then take advantage of it. So, I'll show you guys from both angles, and then we will break down what Winston does on this play. So, you're going to see here, it's going to be a third and three pivotal point, just right on the barrier of the red zone here. And this is an important play here. So he's going to notice the coverage. He's going to put Godwin in motion. And he's going to attack this one-on-one match. It's a nice job. It really is a nice job. And that's the smarts and the QB recognition that you need to see. And it is on display here. So that's really, really good. So you'll see it from this angle too. Just It's it's an easy throw. Like The throw is not the hard part, obviously. I mean, that's just an easy throw for an NFL quarterback to make. But really what I was looking at on that play is to, for Winston, recognize what the defense is showing you and then capitalize off of it and find weaknesses in it. Because if we run it back here, you're going to see what Winston is able to recognize here. It's really just one-on-one coverage. You have one, two, three against one, two, three. So Winston's going to recognize that. He's going to tell Godwin over here that it's one-on-one coverage and we could really take advantage of this on the post route. And he's just going to run a nice post. Just easy, one-on-one, and he's going to be able to win there. And he's a good route runner, Godwin, and Winston's going to recognize that, and it's a really easy pitch and catch because of it. And especially one-on-one matchups, man-to-man coverage with no help over the middle of the field on these types of routes, especially against players like Godwin, are really tough to defend, and the Rams don't do that. So when you see it, you're just really going to see an easy one-on-one because what's going to happen is basically... This safety is going to play over the top, and then you're going to just see one-on-one, and then he ran a little in route here, one-on-one, and then Godwin's picked up by this defender, and it's just easy one-on-one coverage, as I said before, and Winston recognizes the pocket is clear, and it's going to be an easy one-on-one win for Godwin, and then a pitch and catch by Winston to Godwin, and that is, to me, Just a really good play to show what Winston's able to do. He could recognize plays. He is smart. And a lot of people say, oh, he's just a guy with a big arm. He's not just a player with a big arm. He's actually really smart. Like, you don't become the number one pick for not being smart. He was a really smart player in college, and he's a smart player here in the pros. It's just not always consistent. And I'm just going to show you and try to shed some light that he can actually be smart, and he has shown that he is smart on a lot of occasions. And this was just an amazing play to also, he was signaling to... Godwin saying, like, look, this is a one-on-one, I'm coming to you. And he also figured out that it was one-on-one coverage by that movement. He was able to signal over Godwin and try to get some movement in the offense to see what the defense is doing. Then Winston saw how the defense responded. He told that to Godwin with the hand signals, and it was an easy pitch and catch. So that's obviously really, really big there, and we'll let this play run out from this angle. Again, really nothing new, but you're going to see what Winston's able to do, just an easy pitch and catch. And Winston obviously is a good QB and he could do some great things and he can easily make that throw. 
So that's our first play, and definitely a good one by Winston there. Here's our second play, and this one's going to show Winston's great arm. And Winston here, under pressure, throws a bomb to Mike Evans, and it's right on the money. If he can bring this to the Saints and more plays like these, he's going to win the job, no doubt. And I, I know Taysom Hill and what he can do, but look, this throw is absolutely insane. And I don't know how many NFL quarterbacks can make this throw here. So you're going to see here, he's going to just basically unload on this deep ball to Mike Evans. It is one-on-one -on -one coverage here, and Evans is open, but <laughs> basically off his back foot, he throws a perfect strike. Just an absolute perfect strike. And Evans obviously has all the rights to celebrate here, because you're going to see I mean, there is pressure here. Like, look at that. Pressure's in his face. He's thrown really off the back foot, and he just throws just straight arm talent and just throws a perfect ball to Evans. It, like, fluttered right into his hands. Like, that is amazing. And we're going to run it back to see what Winston did here and really break down the play, because when you see it, it is just an easy one-on-one -on -one here. There's no help over the top, so you have all this space over here, and then it's just really just a one-on-one. -on -one. And then he's going to be able to win on this post route. And to me, that is a, just a really nice route by Evans, but also a really nice job by Winston. Like, look at this throw here when we play it here. There is a defender, Aaron Donald, one of the best defenders in the league, right in Winston's face. Arm is up, and Winston definitely couldn't wind up and throw this ball. He wasn't just winding up and just bombing it downfield, no. This was basically off of his back foot or no motion to wind up. It's just like all arm talent. This is what his arm can do. And you're looking right now, he's standing at the 25-yard line, 26-yard line here. And he throws it all the way down to the 30-yard 30, 30 line. It threw it to like right here. And right in stride. So you're throwing from the 25 to the 35. Basically 55 yards, all arm. There's no legs. He wasn't winding up. Like, that's insane. The Saints haven't seen that since Drew Brees' early days, and it would be a breath of fresh air, and Taysom Hill, I don't think, can do that either. As much as I love Taysom Hill, I do think that Winston has the better arm talent than Hill, and you're looking at Winston's raw ability, and then you see that he also is smart and has the recognition. You pair those together, and you're like, he should be a really good QB. And look, he did throw for over 5,000 yards. He did throw over 30 touchdowns last year. We, we gotta say that. Like, that definitely happened. It's just, again, his... Decision-making sometimes just isn't good. But to me, the arm talent's there. He's able to recognize one-on-one -on -one coverage and then just absolutely throw a bomb. Like, having a quarterback that can throw a bomb like that again is just really a breath of fresh air. And it's something that the Saints will be able to do. They can push the ball down the field and they haven't been able to throw those deep, big shot plays in a really long time. And to see what Sean Payton could do with that, it's really, really intriguing. So to me, that is a really nice job for the Saints there, and then you're going to see Evans just uh, skipping into the end zone there. So that was obviously a good touchdown, and you're going to see it from this angle too. I, I do want to just show you guys what the pressure he was looking at. Like, Donald's going to come right up the middle, and look at that. Like, right there, like, he's winded up. The defender's basically in his face, and Winston's still able to uncork a bomb. Again, that's just really, really big, and to have arm strength like that is really important, and you have to shed a light on it. And a lot of people are going to say, well, yeah, he has the arm talent, but he can't do other things. you got to at least show that. He's got a hell of an arm, and he's going to show it day in and day out. And that arm paired with, he's a smart quarterback. I mean, not, not to get anything wrong, he's a smart quarterback. You pair those together, he's definitely an NFL starter. And the Saints have that as a backup, and that's obviously really big, and he could be the future of the Saints. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how he projects for the Saints, but again, these intangibles, you can't miss them. So to me, that is really big there. So here is our next play. The Rams are down by 11 in this situation. They're down in 10 from the Bucks' 11-yard line, and Winston's going to make a really big mistake. And this is what I show you. These lapses in knowledge, these lapses in judgment will have to go away. So I'll show you guys it. It's obviously not a good play. It's going to be a pick six. But I'll let you guys see it from both angles, and then we will break it down here. But, I mean, it's an underthrown ball, too. And, and he tries to fit it in. And look, if he had a perfect throw, he would have hit him there. It was not a perfect throw, and it's a pick six. And that's just something that he has to just either hold on to or throw away. He cannot force that ball in there. 
And that's something that you're going to see. There is pressure. And again, that's no excuse for this one, but there is some pressure. And look at this situation. He just has to throw the ball away. No one's open. Nobody is really getting big separation. You're up by 11 and you're deep into the fourth quarter. The worst you can do is throw a pick. And again, you cannot do that. And he does. So that's the worst thing he can do when he does it. And he does it because, look, he's trying to make a play. He's trying to fit the ball in there. And when we run this one back to see what the Rams are trying to do on defense and what the Bucks are doing on offense. So he's trying to hit this guy right here. And basically what the Rams are trying to do, they're basically trying to guard this line to gain. So they're just trying to guard this with their life, basically. And they're going to use a zone defense to do it. You're going to have Peters do this zone. So he, this is his zone. And then this defender is this zone. And then he's going to go over here and do this zone. He's got this zone. They're going to drop back in coverage as well. This safety over here is going to get this zone. And he's going to be backing up with Peters and giving him help over the top here. And that's what we're going to focus on. Because what the Bucks try to do, they try to basically run this fly route and pattern here. And try to be right in the middle of the two guys. So they're trying to just basically surgically put this ball right between the two defenders and Winston underthrows him. And Winston, obviously, yes, he has pressure and the pressure definitely affected the ball. And that's probably why it was underthrown. But in that situation, when your receiver's basically double covered, your best bet in this one is to throw the ball away or take the sack and let the Rams drive down twice to win the game. That's what you do in this situation. You don't throw the pick. You don't give the pick six. Now the Bucks end up winning this game, but what if they didn't? And again, now you get into these situations where Winston could lose you games. And that's the scary part with him. Because these lapses in judgment late in games really hurts you. It gives up touchdowns. This is where the 30 picks come. Because when you look at this play and how it develops, it's just going to be... Look, if he throws it out here, he actually has a completion. And again, maybe if he throws it a little too far, it's not a pick, but it's an incompletion. He throws it to the worst possible spot. He throws it behind him. So that's bad ball placement and bad decision making. Because, again, under pressure, trying to make a throw, trying to get the first down to win the game. You don't need to. Just throw the ball away, take the sack, and the team would be just fine. Don't try to do any heroics. Because then you're going to see this, this hole get even smaller and smaller. And then when the pick happens, the pick, and then even this defender is coming in. So where is he going to throw it? Right here? It would have been a tough throw, especially under pressure. At that point... You just throw the ball away, you take the sack, and that's really what it is for Winston. And again, a lot of people are going to say he's going to make bonehead plays like these. And yeah, he did. But we got to take the next step with him, and you got to correct those mistakes so he doesn't make them with the Saints or in the future, because that's how he's going to get better. He has all the intangibles, he just can't have lapses in judgment, and again, trying to make plays when they're not there. And you got to be a smart QB as well. Look, he's got the big arm, he's got all of the smartness but you got to be a player that doesn't try to do too much as well and I guess that goes into your IQ and being a smart player so maybe he's just not 100% there smart but I think he recognizes things I think he understands the game I think sometimes he just tries to do a little too much and that's really my opinion on him so as we fast forward to our next play here it's going to be a new game and these negative plays kind of continue here for Winston and his team here. So if we fast forward, it's going to be against the Saints. And this is going to be a play here that again, is just a lapse in judgment. It's a fourth down. And he is down by 10 with five minutes to go. But this is just an awful throw. And when you look at it, we'll break it down. But we'll let you guys watch it twice. You probably remember this play. He basically just throws it right into Marcus Williams's hands and it's a pick six. And these plays hurt his team. And when you when you watch it, you're going to see that you have Winston, just, it's a miscommunication for sure, but you don't throw that ball, it's too much traffic, even if they were on the same page, even if they were on the same page, it would have been an incomplete pass, and maybe a pick anyways, I mean, you look at it, there are three defenders for two receivers, you don't throw it into that area, and even if you just see, they're on the same page, there are three defenders, maybe four defenders here, that are in the play, that are ready to make a defensive play, and they're really only three receivers, Again, it's just a bonehead play by Winston, and again, it's going to hurt them. So if we run this back, you're going to see here, this is actually a very interesting coverage for the Saints, and they actually do disguise it well. So it's just one-on-one -on -one here with Williams over the top, but you're going to see Garner Johnson blitz, and then you're going to have Alonzo drop back in coverage. 
And then also you're going to see Von Bell help as well. And that is also going to be big. So you really have four guys for three receivers. And it's really going to be only two receivers in the area once the play is made. So as we look at this, you're going to see here and figure out that it's going to be really five Saints players in the area for three receivers. He's going to end up throwing it out here. Because when we just fast forward a little further, look how many receivers are in the area. In this area. Three Saints, two Bucks. And if he's throwing that ball over here, you have one defender and two defenders. And even if the receiver came, it would have been an incomplete pass, maybe a pick anyways. If he came over here, let's just say it was a miscommunication on Winston's part and it was actually that little curl, you would still have one receiver cutting in, two, and then three. I don't think either would have been a completion. Again, this is a miscommunication and also a really bad throw by Winston. I don't really know what he's able to do, even if that is a corner route or a go route up the seam. It's just not a good throw. And Winston's got to be better. And if he makes plays like this with the Saints, they will get hurt. And you don't see Breeze making these plays. And we haven't really seen Taysom Hill enough. But again, that's why Teddy was so good with the Saints. is because he didn't make bonehead mistakes. The team was good enough that they can win with a quarterback that didn't make bonehead mistakes. Winston sometimes makes bonehead mistakes like these. And if he can just cut down on these, he would be a really good quarterback here in the NFL. But we got to show you the good and the bad here, and those are really the two sides of Jameis Winston, but I do want to finish off on a good note, and obviously, we want to just see one good throw from Winston here back. It's going to be later in the game. This is just going to be an amazing throw by Winston, and when you look at it, just beautiful, dropped in the bucket, perfect throw. It's good coverage by Chauncey Garner-Johnson, a better throw by Winston here, and you just see this arm talent, and you see him recognize the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's going to take this chance, and it's just dropped in the bucket. It's a perfect throw. I love that by Jameis Winston. And if he could do that for the Saints here at any time throughout his career, consistently, you see a quarterback that has all of the intangibles to be successful in the NFL. So if we run it back, you're going to see that this is basically just one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's going to be up, and then it's going to be up. Just easy, one-on-one, -on -one, and Winston's going to recognize that. And then just throw a drop in the bucket, amazing throw. And this arm talent makes you think, like, he can amount to something here. He can be a real good NFL quarterback and win a championship. Like, that arm talent plus the recognition abilities that we saw earlier, you really see some positive things here. So when we look at the play, it's just going to be one-on-one. -on -one, and then look at this. Now, the Bucks receiver really only has one step, if that, on Chauncey Garner-Johnson. You need a perfect throw here. And what does Winston do? Drops it right in the bucket perfectly. Just so good. There's not much breaking down you do on that play. That's just arm talent. That's just an amazing throw. And if he can make plays like those for the Saints, sky's the limit for him. And you're going to see it from this angle again. And I just love this angle because you get the close-up to the drop in the bucket here. You're going to see just <laughs> look where this throw is. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's perfect. It's right in his arms. It's just perfect. Couldn't be any better. And he is that great arm talent and consistently good arm talent. And you just pair that with his smarts and his recognition. And if you just take out those lapses of judgment and really trying to just do too much on the field, he will become a good quarterback here in the NFL. Maybe it's with the Saints. Maybe it's not. If he can't get rid of those lapses of judgment and he can't stop throwing interceptions and he just keeps that gunslinging attitude that I'm going to try to make any play in the world and I'm going to do it forever... It's going to be hard for him to find consistent success. That's just the fact of the matter. I think he could get out of those lapses or at least have a lot less of those lapses than usual because you're going to tell me, oh, well, Brett Favre is a gunslinger. He makes those lapses not nearly as much as Winston does. Winston threw 30 picks. Like, he definitely had a lot of those bonehead mistakes. But then again, he also makes some amazing plays like these. And sometimes you got to take the up with the down, but you have to have 90% up, 95% up to be really an elite quarterback. And Winston's not at that level yet. And right now, I, I do think that he took this year so he can make sure those lapses of judgment go down and really just star next year. And I, and I do think that's what he's trying to do here. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out. But again, if you have this type of arm talent here in the building with Drew Brees, with Taysom Hill, it is very intriguing for Winston to see what he can do with the Saints. So with all that said, 
I think it is time to wrap up this film study. Again, I think Winston could be a part of the Saints' future here. I do think that he is going to at least battle with Taysom Hill for Drew Brees' heir apparent. And it's going to be interesting to see what these guys can do in training camp and the preseason when they play and get all the snaps. And again, I think Winston could show a lot of growth. Again, if he can get rid of those just bonehead mistakes, he is going to be a really good quarterback. I think currently he's an average quarterback, but you take those mistakes out, those bonehead mistakes that really cost you games, he jumps right up into the good category, and then he has the chance to grow into an even better quarterback. I think that I would definitely look hard at him to be the heir apparent of Drew Brees, and with him, Taysom Hill, I think the next quarterback is in the room and in the roster currently. Now we got to figure out who that is between Hill and Winston. I think both guys have a lot of upside. Both guys could win with the Saints. We just got to pick the right guy to do that. And as we saw, Winston has all the arm talent in the world. He does have recognition abilities. He does know how to recognize what the defense is putting out and be a smart quarterback in that respect. Because a lot of people say he's just not a smart quarterback. No, he's smart. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes he just tries to do too much and maybe have a lapse in judgment. And that's where you get the bonehead mistakes. So he does have all those intangibles to be a really good QB. There's just this other side where it's just like a light switch turns on and he tries to be Superman. And if he's able to mitigate that with the Saints or whoever he plays for, I think he will find a lot of success here in the NFL. But that's all I have for you guys in this video. Definitely leave a like down below. Comment, what do you guys think about Winston? Do you think he's going to be the next heir apparent to Drew Brees? Or do you think Taysom Hill will be the next QB for the Saints? Do you guys like what Winston could put out on the field? Do you think those bonehead mistakes are just too much for him to really be your franchise quarterback? And then also follow us on all our social media accounts. So me personally on Twitter, I'm at Andrew Galata. And the Who Dat discussion on Twitter is at the Who Dat Dis, as I said earlier in this video. And then also on Instagram, the Who Dat discussion is at Who Dat discussion. So definitely check us out on there as well. But I think with all that said, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Run it back. And Who Dat?